How to Manage Personal Finances book, Chapter 3, How Complexity Harms Investors. This is Ken Boyd with the Substack Accounting Accidentally page. So an author's note, I am posting a text version of this entire book on Substack, which is what you see here, and video versions on YouTube. If you click through on the link and you go to my site, you'll see a playlist here that will have all the videos. So you can email me here at this address for details of the book's publishing date in late 24 or early 25. Complexity is harming investors. I've been talking about this for a long time. Here's a CNBC article from April of 22. As more cutting edge products work their way into the marketplace, there's a growing fear of retail investors, even professional brokers are getting in over their heads. Now note the end of that sentence because it's important. Investing may now be too complex for professional brokers who do this for a living. Complex product offerings is part of the problem. The Federal Industry Regulatory, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, or FINRA, that's who regulates investment markets, considers leverage and inverse EFTs, equity index annuities, and reversible convertibles as complex products. Now, I've been in the investment business for years. I started my career there in the 80s. I stay informed. I've never heard of an inverse EFT. I guess the joke's on me. This is complicated for somebody who allegedly knows what they're doing and has been in the business. As we said in a prior chapter, thousands of choices. So consider this, the more investment choices there are, the more your investment advisor must learn and monitor to stay informed. Not only do you have to be somewhat informed, your investment advisor has to be informed. So how many investment choices are out there? How about mutual funds? They're straightforward, right? Over the past 40 years, individual investors have used mutual funds with great success. However, Statista, not sure how to pronounce it, but this is a great site, reports that there are over 126,000 mutual funds as of 2020, probably more now. What about exchange-traded funds? You may see a lot of commercials for ETFs. Another investment product used by individual investors. The same site says there's 2,200 ETFs as of 2020. Warren Buffett, possibly the world's most successful investor, has always said, don't invest in businesses you don't understand. With so many choices, it's hard to make decisions to understand your investments. Is your insurance agent or CPA soliciting your investment business? You're not alone. Another issue is we may have too many advisors. In the late 90s and early 2000s, I trained over a thousand people in a test prep course to become FINRA licensed to be investment brokers. I work for a company that's now part of Kaplan. You may have heard of Kaplan. And I taught a 40 hour course once a month. One of the hardest things I've ever done. Many people in that class were CPAs and insurance agents who were moving into the investment advisory field. This caused a lot of confusion for investors because professionals and other firms that they know of as their tax accountant or insurance agent we're now giving investment advice. Wait, I thought Bob was an insurance agent. Why is he talking to me about my retirement plan? It's an important point, but not making a decision is itself a decision. If we simply pass on making a decision, our problems compound and get even worse. So let's think about compounding problems. So I heard somebody say, he can't lick his butt. That's why he's got an infection, is losing weight. And I thought, I hope she's talking about a dog. As I walked by and heard more of the phone call, it turned out the woman was a vet. She was on the phone with a client. The point being, both humans and animals often have medical complications, and one issue could cause multiple problems. <clears throat> a patient might have bad teeth, for example, and doesn't eat well. By not eating well, the patient loses weight, starts having problems related to poor nutrition. So problems compound, and we can avoid compounding problems when we deal with personal finances. So let's deal with it on the front end sooner rather than later. Let's move to a discussion of personal finance goals. Here are some examples that may apply to you. I want to make smarter decisions about spending. I don't want money to fall through my hands. Covering unexpected expenses is frustrating. I need an emergency fund to pay for car repairs and other surprises. Really frustrating. My goal is to buy a home or an apartment in five years. I need to save and invest for a down payment. Finally, I'd like to retire in 20 years. I need an investment fund to cover my expenses once I retire. So setting up an emergency fund is a short-term goal to solve a short-term problem. Funding retirement is long-term. So why goals matter? 
The reason you're reading this book possibly is to help you reach your goals financially. That's the payoff for putting in the time and effort to learn about personal finances. It takes time and effort. So when problems feel difficult, remember your goals. Having goals gives you direction, and that helps you stick to your goals. There's a reason you're doing what you're doing. Why am I not spending more on vacation this year? Oh, that's right. I committed to save more money for that down payment. So that's as far as we'll get on Chapter 3. Again, you can find the entire book on Substack as I go here, video versions on YouTube. Thanks for watching.